You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you so much for joining us today for this episode 970 as we get closer and closer to 1,000. Very excited and uh, very, very thankful that you uh, have been a part of this. Many of you have been a part of this journey since day one, actually, and that's pretty awesome. So we appreciate it very much. Have an interesting show today. We do. These are, this is one of those go deep shows. It is really not a go deep show, unfortunately, although I know... Well, let me, let me put it this way. The concepts are deep. Maybe we won't, we won't go deep into those concepts, but mm. let me put this another way. This For me, they're deep really concepts. really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Rob's going to tell us about going deep. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Not your intention? Okay. What do you, what do you want me to do? Okay. I, I do my it. best. Okay. And this happens. You know, <laughs> it's going to happen. I, this is my job. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is going to happen. You know? It is, it does. Um, Anyways, all right. All right. So, welcome to the show. We're really excited. We're not talking about going deep. We're, our question today is about penetrating the ground, okay? Just to clarify what, what we're talking about here. Um, because obviously with photogrammetry, there's only so much you can cover. With LiDAR, you can penetrate vegetation, but can you penetrate snow? Can you penetrate ice? What if you have to map those areas? Is it possible? Well, that's what our question is focused on today. So our question is brought to you by our upcoming Seattle mapping course, which is actually almost sold out. Uh, for everyone who has been hearing about the NTSB class, to answer a lot of everyone's questions, yes, it's like an advanced mapping class. We do start from zero, but we do go very deep as well. We've actually postponed that class to September 23rd through 27th in Ashburn, Virginia. The reason why is that the government shutdown really had an effect on a lot of police agencies and uh, particular people being able to plan and budget to go to an event like this. And because it is accident reconstruction focused, we want to make sure that the people who had already planned to go to that training are able to go. So that's why we moved it and bumped it to September 23rd through 27th. So anyway, um, check out all that and more. Just go to DroneU.Education and you'll see it all come up. Hello, Paul and Rob. This is Scott Conley from Denver. And I've got a question about LiDAR. Can LiDAR see through snow? We have a lot of avalanches going on right now. And just curious if a lot of these law enforcement agencies would be able to use LiDAR in order to find people buried in potential avalanches. Please let me know. Thank you for everything you do, and I look forward to hearing you guys a lot more. Thanks. Appreciate that, Scott. Thanks for taking the time to get your question in. Um, yeah, you, you hear too many stories of particularly probably skiers and just sort of backcountry folks that go off the uh, beaten path. They get off the trails and get into places that they're not supposed to be which is a recipe for disaster. Um, My buddies always did that in college, and I was just like, this can literally snowball, no pun intended, so fast. Totally. I yeah. just, I never went the back country. I'd, I've got friends who that's all they do. And, and especially in Wyoming, my buddy Brandon up in Jackson Hole, like, mm. gosh, his images are unreal. But uh, he goes places I would absolutely never risk. Absolutely not, but if you are going to do that, at least make sure you have all the appropriate gear, right? Your beacons and, and all the, the safety equipment that one would have. The only work. way I'm doing backcountry skiing, Rob, I'm just going to clarify this, and uh, you can add this to my birthday present wish list, mm -hmm. um, is a backpack like in 007 from like 2002, where you literally, the, the backpack would inflate to a circle around him and surround him with what looked like an inflatable air mattress like around him in a ball so that when the avalanche happened, it didn't matter because he had literally created his own little igloo as the avalanche came. So it's a backpack that when you pull the ripcord, inflates a huge ball around you. I love it. All right, so that's what I want for my birthday. So for a cool million, 
<laughs> or what, whatever. I, mean, I wonder James if Bond that exists. Yeah. So, okay, let's answer his question. Um, can LiDAR see through snow? The answer is no. Um, sorry, the, I know it's a very long-winded answer, um, <clears throat> but the answer is no. Um, is there another solution, though, that could potentially solve your problem? Well, there's ground-penetrating radar, but there's also synthetic aperture radar. Um, I know this is kind of getting into more of the advanced sensor payloads that are available for large-scale UAVs, and they're available for small-scale fixed-wing UAVs as well. But synthetic aperture radar can actually penetrate through snow. The amount in which it can penetrate is completely dependent on environmental circumstances, including the crystalline size of the snow. So depending on how big the individual snow flakes are, or the crystals, will literally determine the penetration depth of mm. the synthetic aperture radar. Now, if it's ice, if it's just pure ice, the, the penetration depth increases significantly. But when I actually went to research this, I found out some really interesting information. Depending on whether it's solid pure ice, depending on whether you know it's snow of varying degrees, and dependent on the temperature, and dependent on the band of radar that's being used, will essentially showcase the best penetration of the snow. So for example, the KA band, so if, it's funny if you've ever been on the phone with me and, and I'm in the car and you hear KA alert. Um, <laughs> I have heard that. <laughs> that means there's popo in the area. <laughs> but KA, and we love the popo. Yeah, the, but KA uh, band is also the most useful, the most uh, practical form of synthetic aperture radar. So that is a particular band on, on the frequency. It's uh, right about 30 gigahertz. And that will have the deepest penetration of the snow. Although your chances of finding someone with a drone that has synthetic aperture radar on this particular band, well, those chances are very low. I'm not going to say slim to none, but they're very low. 10% so or less. Probably. I don't know if it's really a viable solution um, for this guy. So yeah. anyway. I'm I'm sure that they are looking at all sorts of options for this. I was just kind of researching this. It's interesting that they're using the kind of technology you're referring to for um, anti-personal landmine detection. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. So, probably not going to work to get somebody out of an, an avalanche. I'm trying to find also how deep the average person who gets caught, if there is such a thing as an average person who gets caught in an avalanche, how deep they are. And uh, what, what that would look like because um, it doesn't seem like this can go very deep, even if it does work. True, very true. On that bombshell, that is going to do it for our show today. Thank you again very much for watching. We will see you next time.